Hello, everyone, and welcome to the 2022 Legacy Triathlon and USA Paratriathlon National Championship pre-race webinar. We're going to talk today a little bit about the details and schedule of the event and critical information that you need to know to have a successful and smooth event. Let's first talk about the schedule for the weekend. On Friday night, or during the day on Friday, from 11 a.m. to 7.30, you'll be able to pick up your packet at the expo area on the beach. This year, they will, there will be no bike check-in on Friday night. All bike check-in occurs on Saturday morning, but we still encourage you to come down and pick up your packet and be ready to go for Saturday morning's event. From 12.30 to 3.30, the USA Triathlon Foundation and Ready Set Gold of Los Angeles will be ho hosting a youth activation at the Zwift headquarters, which are located in Long Beach. At 5 p.m., America's Cup athletes will be able to participate or view the online pre-race webinar for their Sunday event. 4.45 p.m. to 6 p.m., open water swim, check-in and packet pickup will occur in the expo and registration tent. Promptly at 6.30, the 1500 meter open water swim will begin all age groups. At 6.45, the 750 meter open water swim will begin all age groups as well at near swim, down at swim start. And at 7.15, the awards ceremony will take place at the finish line next to the expo area. Saturday, July 16th, the parking access opens at 4.30 a.m. in the convention center parking lot. Please enter off Ocean Boulevard. 4.45 to 6 p.m., 6 p.m., 6 a.m., the bike check-in, which is mandatory, will take place. Get your bike into the transition area. Transition also opens at 6:40 or at 4:45, and goes till 6:40. And also, 4:45 race day packet pickup will commence, and you'll have till 6:15 to do that. So we highly encourage people to come down Friday, participate in the expo, and and um, see what we have for vendors and. Um, kind of get used to the sights down there at Alameda Speech, um, and then come ready to race on Saturday morning. A reminder that the roads close at 5 a.m. So Shoreline and Ocean Boulevard, there will be no access into the race area, but we have convenient parking at the convention center parking lot right across the street from transition. We will offer a swim warm up this year that will start at 615 and we'll get the athletes out at that time around 635. The first wave goes off at 645 relays Olympians and the non binary category wave will take off at 645 and then from 647 to 743 we have eight waves of age group athletes, please check the schedule on the web page and you will receive this information also, your wave and your cap color at packet pickup. At 8.15, paratriathlete, paratriathletes, you will have the opportunity to take, take part in a swim familiarization from 8.15 to 8.45. And then at 9.20 to 9.50, paraathletes, you will also be able to take part in a bike familiarization a one lap escorted tour around the bike course um, during that time. So please be prompt that will take place starting at Linden and Shoreline Drive. And also added this year at 945, we have the Legacy Splash and Dash for youth, seven to 17 years old. It's a hundred meter swim and 1K run. For more information, please visit the Legacy Triathlon website for registration information. This <clears throat> event is free 
for all kids wanting to do the splash and dash. The award ceremony starts at 1030 and roads reopen as well at 1030. All bikes must be out of transition by 11. Sunday, July 17th, a quick overview of the elite athlete races. We will be hosting three consecutive races on Sunday. The elite men begin at 610 and will have an hour and 15 minutes to complete their event. Promptly at 725, the elite women will start their event and they will be completed at 840. And promptly at 840, the paratriathlon national championships will be, be begin. Paratriathletes, you can notice on the schedule your start time for your wave, your classification, and the interval time as per, as per <clears throat> paratriathlon national championship guidelines. At 9.05, the PC Open and Challenge teams will begin their wave. Note this year, we have a hard reopening of the roads to the public at 1040. If there are athletes remaining on the course competing, we will safely exit them off the course and assist them to the transition or finish line area. This is... Um, deemed by the city for our race permit, the 1040 reopening, and we do not have much wiggle room on this. So um, please be aware that if you are still on the course at 1040, um, you, will, you will be assisted off the course. The awards ceremony for all races will be at 11 a.m. near the finish line area. Packet pickup information, Friday, July 15th, from 11 a.m. to 7.30 p.m. Once again, no bike check-in. This will be at Alameda Beach, the expo area on the beach. And also on Saturday, of course, it's a mandatory bike check-in. This begins at 4.45 um, and lasts till 6.15, the check-in process. Uh, you have till 640 to get all your items into TA, but the race day packet pickup is only 90 minutes long. So please, please come down on Friday, pick up your packet and be ready to go. Expo begins from seven at 7 a.m. and closes at 11 a.m. on Saturday. Race site parking information, July 15th, Friday, if you're coming down to pick up your packet or if you are participating in the open water swim, you will utilize public parking um, on Shoreline Drive or Alamitos Beach parking lot or available public parking in Marina Green public parking. There are also, if you can see it on the, the purple um, parking block, that's um, Pike parking structure. You can park in there as well. You will just need to pay the local um, parking fee for parking um, in any of these lots. Saturday and Sunday, we encourage you to park in the convention center parking lot. Please enter in off Ocean Boulevard. If you are a Toyota vehicle owner, the first 60 will be given free parking for Saturday and Sunday. So if you're a Toyota owner, get there early, get one of those slots. Um, all others, Ford, Chevy, Subaru drivers, you'll have to pay the $15 um, required for the event parking. And they will take your, there are no parking passes this year. Parking attendants will take your cash or credit. Let's talk a little bit about our events app. Once again, USA Triathlon um, has an event app that will assist you in, in following, um, following your progress live and your spectators, athletes, family, friends can do this as well. You can download the app today on Apple or Android devices by searching USA Triathlon Events in the Apple 
App Store or Google Play Store or visit www.usatriathlon.org forward slash download app from your phone. You can also, it's live tracking is also available in a web browser format for computers from our website. So please visit our website if you're interested in that. A few more things about the app, track yourself and other participants, register for race updates for yourself or athletes you wish to follow. Um, you can receive important notifications about the event from USA Triathlon. Push notifications will be sent out on possible changes in any scheduling, advise use, users of emergencies. So it's, it's very wise to download this app um, and be in tune to what's happening on race day. Body marking and sticker placement. You can see um, you'll, you'll be given a wide array of stickers and bib, bibs for your participation in the triathlon during the weekend. You can see by the graphics where to place your helmet sticker, which sticker that is, where to place your bib so it's visible to race organizers. So follow these graphics as, as we work through these. Next up is... Um, Placing your bike's bike number on your seat post. Um, and as well as we have bag check this year, you'll at packet pickup, you'll be given a clear plastic bag to put in your personal items that will not or do not belong in the transition area. So place your bag at bag check and place the sticker on the clear plastic bag that, that you're given at packet pickup. Body marking tattoos. The placement is right below your bicep on the outside of your arm and on the outside of your calf. So this is visible to timing and race staff as well. This is very important for accountability and safety as well as timing. Your timing chip must be worn around the ankle, preferably on your left ankle. Timing chips in 2022 must be returned after the event. We'll have Finish line assistance, helping you take off your timing chip and placing them in the bucket. If you take, if you want to take your own timing chip off, chip off, please do so and place them in the buckets provided at finish line. If you lose your chip and can't find it, there is a replacement fee of ninety-five dollars. If you forget to give your chip back but you still have it on your person, you can mail it back to Sports Stats at the address listed below here. This is also on our web page. Um, and if you forget to place it in the bucket, you can also give it to one of the staff um, after you've gone back and got some food or whatever you're doing, um, just uh, get it back to our staff. Chips will be distributed at packet pickup. Um, they won't be in your packets. Um, they'll be distributed at packet pickups. For athletes doing multiple races, chips will display your bib number for each respective race and you are responsible as the athlete to wear your chip through the entirety of the whole event for to get accurate splits accurate timing and placement um, for the event and also for accountability and safety on the course most particularly during the swim course so please wear your chip through the entire race um, from beginning to end and through each phase of the triathlon. If you're part of a relay team, you'll be handing that same chip off to your relay teammates, um, and that procedure will be gone over at um, pre-race briefing on site. Required, let, let's talk a little bit about the open water swim happening on Friday night. Your required check-in will be race evening starting at 4.45 and, and lasting through 6 p.m. for all athletes. Swim warm-up area open at 6.10 p.m. and will go till about 6.25. Participants will report to the swim area no later than 6.20. If you're not participating in the swim warm-up, participants will be placed in appropriate staging for each respective wave. There's only two waves for the open water swim. And open water swim waves will begin 1500 at 630 and 645 for the 750 meter swim. Here's a graphic of the 1500 meter course. 
you see where the, the, the start, start area is, you'll start from there. Reminder that orange buoys are sight buoys and you can swim on either side of those buoys. But when you reach the yellow turn buoys, you will keep them to your right. On this course, it's a rectangular course, you'll turn right at the first yellow turn buoy. It's about 150 meter stretch to the next turn buoy. You will take a right and then swim into the finish. You'll go through the finish arch, 1500 meter swimmers, exit the water, run or walk across the sand back to the start and enter in for a second lap. So you'll swim two laps of the 750 meter swim. Open water swim 750, you will swim one lap, same swim course, start in the same area, sight buoy, right turn at the turn buoy, another right turn at the yellow turn buoy, and then swim into the finish and finish through the swim arch, which is about 25 yards or 25 meters from the water's edge. Please remember to wear the swim cap that we provide for our swim accountability and safety. Um, please, please wear the swim cap that we provide you. Race morning for the sprint, the legacy sprint triathlon age group race. Required bike check-in will be starting at 445 for all athletes. Reminder, again, no bike check-in on Friday. Transition and bike check-in open for all athletes from 445 to 615. Parking athletes are encouraged to ride or carpool to the venue. See parking information on the website. No parking on the race course, which <clears throat> the the roads will be closed at 5 a.m. So it'll be very difficult for you to get to Shoreline Drive if you're expecting to park, but convention center parking is very convenient. Swim warm up will open at 6.15 and will close at 6.35 a.m. Participants, you'll also have an opportunity to warm up eight minutes prior to their wave start in the wave on deck area located in the swim warm up area. So after a wave goes off, the next wave will come up and you'll, you'll be able to warm up very shortly within that eight minute time before your, your wave starts. Bike support is provided by Playtry. It's located in the Southwest corner of the transition area and they will be on course race day only. So they will not be in the expo area on Friday um, just make sure, or in transition on Friday. So make sure that you will have, take care of your, your any bike issues that you, they, you have prior, um, but they will be on site on race day. Let's talk about the course a little bit. Legacy Triathlon and the Paratriathlon National Championships are, are sprint triathlons. It's a 750 meter swim, a 20 kilometer bike and a 5K run. The swim course for the age group athletes, one lap swim course, sight buoys are orange as we mentioned before for the open water swim, turn buoys are yellow. It is an in water start. Please know your wave start time that will be posted around um, the area on our information tower and also located near swim start. Athletes must wear the swim cap provided. Pair athletes, as a reminder, you will be able to participate in a swim familiarization on Saturday, 8.15 to 8.45 at the swim start. Please be prompt and ready to go. For the age groupers, your, <clears throat> this is what the swim start looks like. All races will utilize the swim course. The only difference is where you enter transition um, for swim in. As you see, you'll swim start, in water start. You'll proceed one sight buoy, which is orange. Take a right at the yellow turn buoy, another right at the yellow turn buoy, and swim past the sight, orange sight buoy. Exit the water. There'll be access tracks that will lead you from the water's edge to a carpeted asphalt path. You will transition on the 
asphalt path, carpeted asphalt path, take a left at the rec path and enter. If you've done this race before, it's the top of the trans transition area or southwest corner of the transition area, enter in the transition and get ready to proceed on your bike. Paratriathletes, you're, you will do exactly the same swim, 750 meter rectangular swim. When you exit out of the water, we will have para handlers there um, assisting, uh, assisting um, athletes that need assistance out of the water. There will be a 20 by 20 deck, hard surface deck built about 30 meters from the water's exit where um, any appliances, chairs, special needs table, anything um, that you require in pre-transition will be there. And then you, after you transition on and, and take care of your items in pre-transition, you will proceed on the access tracks as well across the sand to the carpeted asphalt path up to the recreation path and then enter the transition area about midway through the transition. It'll be heavily marked and we will have volunteers there to um, escort you into the transition area and then you'll take a right and proceed, proceed to your, um, your, your uh, bike in the transition area. So you, you will not go to the southwest corner, you will enter about midway through the uh, transition area. The bike course for the age group, there's a, a one difference between the bike course for the age groupers and the paratriathletes. But let's talk about the age groupers first. 20 kilometer course, two laps. Mount line located outside transition area identified with a green line. USAT officials will be on course. The dismount line will be located before entering transition and identified with a red line. Be aware of cyclists entering the course beginning the second lap. And let's discuss this a little bit. So age groupers, it's a different bike course than if you were here last year, a different bike course. We're back over to similar of what we were in 2019 in the Queen Mary. It's a two lap, 20 kilometer bike. So each lap is 10 kilometers. You'll exit out of transition, um, stay to the right or stay to the left. We will have cones delineating between run out and bike out. And then you'll proceed through the parking lot. You'll take a right onto Linden Avenue, which is just about 50 meters and then take a left onto Shoreline Drive, travel up Shoreline Drive to a designated turnaround point, turn around on Shoreline, Shoreline Drive, come back east. You will take a right over the bridge on Queens Way and enter into the Queen Mary and cruise ship area and dock. You will proceed to the Queen Mary parking lot, take a left, head diagonally across the parking lot and once again, on um, Queensway Drive, exit the Queen Mary parking lot. You will take a right uh, and do a short out and back on Queensway Drive and head back out on Queensway, back over the bridge to Shoreline Drive, down Shoreline Drive to Linden Avenue where you started and you will turn around on Shoreline Drive and proceed and complete a second lap. Do not go into the transition area after lap one. There will be cones delineating between lap one or proceeding to lap two or finishing and going into transition to start your run. So second lap, you will turn around at Linden and Shoreline to, to complete your second lap. Paratriathlon, same bike course, but you will 
have a, you will do a flow through transition, but let's go through this. 20 kilometer course, two laps, 10 kilometers for each lap. Mount line located outside transi transition area identified with a green line. USAT officials will be on course. Dismount line will be located before entering transition and identified with a red line. Paratriathletes will travel through transition in a flow through fashion to second lap. Paratriathletes will be able to, you will also be able to participate in a bike familiarization on Saturday with an es escorted lap, 920 to 950. Meet at Linden and Shoreline Drive. Let's take a look at the map. It's the same bike course. You, once you enter in the swim, you'll take a right to where your designated transition area is to get on your bike or your cycle, whatever you're using. You'll take a short U-turn and exit out of transition onto Linden Avenue again, and then take a left on Shoreline up to the turnaround on Shoreline to Queens Way, take a right across the bridge on Queens Way, travel on Queens Highway to the Queen Mary parking lot, diagonal across the parking lot, Queens Way Drive, take a right into the short up and back. There's about a 40 foot turning radius at the Queens Way turnaround. You'll take a right back out on the Queens Way, head back over the bridge, take a right on shoreline, and then take a right into transition, and then through transition again on Linden and complete your second lap. When you enter in um, to transition area, right before your designated transition area, there will be a dismount line um, about midway in the trans the transition area this near this blue line run course for age groupers this year all races and all run courses will be on shoreline and ocean drive we will no longer be on the recreation path it's a closed run course um two lap run course it, it'll be safer and more um, convenient for all the athletes involved. So the run K five run course, 5K, two lap, shoreline drive and ocean boulevard, two aid stations with Gatorade and water. Aid stations are approximately two kilometers apart. Volunteers and course marshals will be on course. After the second lap, you take a left hand turn onto Alamitos Beach access road. And we'll go through that here quickly. Once you transition off your bike, you will go out this near close to the same area that you did for bike out. You will stay to the right of delineated cones and stay to the to the outside or to the right running out of the Alamitos or Marina Green parking. You'll take a right onto Linden and instead of taking a left like you did on the bike, you will take a right. You'll go across all the um, lanes of traffic and in a clockwise fashion, run up Shoreline Drive, take a right on Ocean Boulevard, travel to right before Falcon Avenue, turn around, come back west, take a left on to Shoreline, past the sec past the finish line turn. So you to complete your second lap, you'll pass that, go down to Linden Avenue, turn around to complete your second lap, complete the second lap in the same fashion as you did your first, turn around, back on Ocean Boulevard, take a left on the shoreline, and then to go to the finish line after completing your second lap, you'll take a left onto Alamitos Beach Access Road, stay to the right, take a right turn in the parking lot, and finish crossing the recreation path into the finish line area. We will have Marina police officers managing the crossing of the recreation path, as well as when you cross the recreation path for entering into um, the transition area from the swim. We know there is a lot of traffic, local traffic going 
using the recreation path, but we have volunteers and <clears throat> uniformed police officers managing those crossings. Para, you will complete um, the same run course. It's a 5K two lap course on Ocean Boulevard and Shoreline, two aid stations, Gatorade and water, approximately two kilometers apart. Volunteers and course marshals will be on the course. After the second lap, left-hand turn onto Alamino Speech Access Road. Let's go over here a little bit. Once again, after you come in and transition, you will transition, you'll take, like you did on the bike, you'll transition onto your, um, transition onto the run, short little U-turn, flow through transition, take a right on Linden, across the lanes, clockwise fashion on the run, up shoreline, east on ocean, back after turn around west, back on ocean, come around, you're gonna turn around on the street. You do not flow through transition on the run. The, tur the turnaround to second lap is at Linden and shoreline. You complete the second lap once again, like you did the first, take a left on to shoreline and then take a left onto Beach Access Road, and then you will flow through to the finish. A couple things about the finish line this year. Of course, there's no construction um, in leading up to the finish. We have widened the finish line to 16 feet, hard surface all the way into the finish, um, a new finish gantry, which is very large. Um, and so there will be more room for all athletes. We are also, we are also softening a, the turn into the finish line, um, which will create an easier um, sight of the finish line and um, navigation to the finish line across the recreation path. Aid stations, they're, like I said before, they're approximately two kilometers apart. We'll have Gatorade, water, and ice. Um, and no bottle exchange on the bike course. Transition area, mountain dismount lines clearly marked. Mount lines will be green, dismount will be red. Bike racks individually numbered. For age group, eight bikes per rack for the legacy triathlon. It's not on here, but the para triathlon, there will be two athletes per rack for para in your designated area. Bike check-in is mandatory 445 to 615 on Saturday, July 16th. Bike checkout begins at 9.30. All bikes must be out by 11 a.m. Mandatory. Paratriathletes um, see on the schedule when you can load into transition. Um, and, and that um, information will, will also be distributed at a later date. Finish line, we'll have Gatorade and water. Um, medical support located just past the finish line. You'll get a finisher medal. Post-race food um, in the post-race food tent, just about 20 yards away from the finish. Bagels, fruit, water, Gatorade, and more. Results posted and scrolling on TVs. Individual results, printouts that will be available. Course penalties will be, and this is a, a change from last year, will be administered on course. Penalty tent will be located at Linden Avenue on the run course. So if you do have a penalty, before you proceed out of the run, you'll be stopped and placed in the penalty tent on the corner of the parking lot and Linden on the west edge of the parking lot on Linden Avenue. It'll be clearly marked. The venue, <clears throat> we do have spectator uh, crossings um, designated here, certain spectator viewing up on Ocean Boule Boulevard. Um, near uh, the recreation path where they swim in is a great spot, and also at swim start and swim finish. Please be aware of athletes. If you are, um, tell your loved ones or people spectating, Linden the, and Shoreline, that crossing gets very busy. That will also be monitored by uniformed police officers, um, but that is a hot corner please limit the, the, the crossing of that 
um, during race time. Bag check will, is in the expo area. You can you see where the, they will be located approximately in the venue. Play try will be in the southwest corner of the transition area. Packet pickup, um, the big, big large tent um, near the finish line uh, in the expo. Post-race food in that same area. There is a Toyota VIP area along the finish line. You can register to take part in that VIP area on the um, USAT Foundation webpage. Sign up, sign up for that. There's a link to register for that VIP area. America's Cup Athletes Lounges is six. You'll be um, right on the north edge, northeast edge of on the parking lot, Marina Green parking lot near TA. Medical tent. We located right at the end of the finish line. Officials tent um, will be lo located at the top of the circle. Coaches VIP check-in area, there's a, will be located right next to the announcers on the east side of the finish line. It's a new thing this year. I think we have like 35 coaches signed up for this. You can, and coaches, if you're interested, um, you can get a, a great um, spot to watch everyone finish. Um, there'll be snacks and our director of coaching education, Earl Walton, will be there to take any questions that you might have. So it's a, gr a great addition to what we have going on at Legacy. And then the announcer stage um, is number 10. Gives you a good idea of what the venue looks like. Award ceremony, um, Saturday morning, 10.30 a.m. The awards will begin at the finish line. Overall, male and female will be awarded, and then top three in each age group, male and female. Paratriathlon awards, Sunday, July 17th, 11 a.m. near finish line, um, and the announcer stage, same location. A reminder, always compete clean. USADA will be on site to do testing. One thing that we want to encourage people to do um, in the climate today is if you see something out of place, say, say something to a, a staff, a security person, on-site police. If you see something that looks suspicious, please say something um, so we can avoid anything um, that might uh, affect this great event. A few thank yous I want to go to Roslyn and Lamar Jarrett Sepulveda. Legacy Ambassadors, Deb Karabat. Legacy Ambassador, Deb um, got together all of our handlers for paratriathlon. Chris Bonney and Brent Ward, Brent Ward of Max Out Events, Chris Bonney of the tribe, the Long Beach Triathlon Club, took care of a lot of water quality testing and sampling, not testing, but uh, getting the samples for us. LA Sports Council and Ready Set Gold, we're collaborating with them. Leah Soloranzo, of the city of Long Beach and the entire city of Long Beach team, Challenged Athletes Foundation, Play Try, Sports Stats, Long Beach Triathlon Club, The Tribe, South Bay Squad, Triathlon Club, LA Tri Club, and JCL Traffic. If you have any additional questions, please send your questions to national events at usatriathlon.org. And truly have a great race. And we'll talk to you soon.